Hey guys, it's Mrs. Glenn. I'm going to do a review on probability. So let's get started. First question. There are 12 6th graders, 11 7th graders, and 13 8th graders on a soccer team. The coach randomly selects one student to collect all of the soccer balls. In how many ways can choosing not an 8th grader occur? So the first thing that I would do is I would add up how many total um, 6th, 7th, and 8th graders that you have. So you have 12 6th graders, 11 7th graders, and 13 8th graders. And if you add that all together, you get 36. Then it says, in how many ways can choosing not an 8th grader? So it's going to be everything but the 8th grade. So 12 plus 11 is 23, or subtracting 13 would give you 23. So there are 23 ways of not choosing um, an 8th grader. Some of you might have written it over 36, but actually it's asking you for how many different ways, not the probability, but how many different ways. So this would not be the right way to answer this question. It would just be 23 ways would be the answer. All right, moving on to the next question. Hold on, having issue. Okay, here we go. Use the spinner to determine the theoretical probability of spinning a four. All right, so if we look on the spinner, the spinner goes from one through eight. How many fours are there? Well, there's only one. So that's one out of how many total pieces in the pie? Eight. And that is all you do. One out of eight probability of spinning a four. Now, if we were to write this with P as in um, probability, parentheses, it's asking you spinning a four. So it's going to be for P event or P4, it is a one and eight, one eighth probability of it happening. And that would be the proper way to write this answer so that anyone can look at it and know that spinning a four would have a one and eighth chance of happening. Next question. For the following question, a spinner has four equal sections numbered one, two, three, and four. You spin it twice. Use the tree, tree diagram to find the probability of the event. Event is spinning an even number, then a three. So this is your first event right here. So your first event, or first spin is right here. And your second spin is in this column. So the first one, it says the first event is spinning an even number. Well, the only even numbers there are is two and four. So that's out of four and there's two even numbers. So it's a two and four or one half chance of spinning an even number because half of them are an even. And then down here, you're going to go spinning an even number, then a three. So you're going to stay in the same column. You're not going to use these branches anymore. These are actually done because they're at the odd branches. So how many threes are in the even? There's one, two out of how many total? So there's four here and four here. Four plus four is eight. And there's two threes in that group of eight. So it's out of two. Now to find them when they both happen, you're going to multiply the two fractions. So 2 fourths times 2 eighths equals 2 times 2 is 4. When multiplying a fraction, you multiply straight across. You only cross multiply when you're doing a proportion and there's an equal sign in the middle. And so the denominators are 4 times 8, which is 32. And if you reduce the, these both by 4 on the top and the bottom, you get 1 eighth. So 4 divided by 4 is 1, 32 divided by 4 is 8, so there is a 1 and eighth probability of choosing or spinning an even number and then a 3. So if we were to write this again um, with the P event, you would write P and the event is spinning an even number then a 3. So you'd say even comma, three, end of parentheses, and that probability is one and eight. So every eight times you try spinning these two spins, 
in a row, you're going to have one time um, that spinning an even number and then spinning a three, that that will occur based on this um, tree diagram. All right, going to the next question. For the following question, you have three sticks. Each stick has one red side, one blue side, and one blue side. You throw the sticks ten times and record the results. Use the table to find the experimental probability of the event, tossing three blue. All right, so experimental probability is the fraction. And you have three blue that happen one time, three red that happen one time, two blue and one red that happen five times, and two blue and one blue, two red and one blue happen three times. So the total frequency is going to add up to ten. One plus one plus five plus three is ten. So it's going to be total out of outcome. And the outcome is what you're testing. It's the experiment or the event. So tossing three blue, that occurred one time out of the total amount that you um, tossed these, and that was 10. So the answer is 1 out of 10. So if we were to write that with P event, you'd write P parentheses, and the event is tossing three blue. So three blue, and a parentheses equals 1 tenth. And that is your answer. All right, going on to the next question. Having some zooming problems. There we go. All right. Um, the possible roles of a number cube are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Which word best describes the likelihood, that means how often it could happen, of rolling not a 7? So on the cube, there's only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So rolling not a 7, are you ever going to be able to roll a 7? No. So rolling not a 7 will happen every time. So equally likely, well, that's not every time. Certain, that could be every time. Likely, yes, but there's not unlikely because you're never going to roll a 7. The only time that it would be impossible, I'm trying to cross that out, the only time that it would be impossible is if this die was covered with 7s. Rolling not a 7 means that you'll always get a 7 if you pick impossible, which obviously that's never going to happen because this is not a 7-sided die. So it's certain that you will always not get a 7. And this is tricky the way they worded it, but um, you just have to be careful with reading it to make sure that you are answering the right question. All right, the sock question. You have six pairs of socks, 12 total socks in the drawer and the dryer. Only one pair is black. You randomly choose two of the socks. What is the probability that you got both of the black socks? All right, so this is a compounded event. So you have um, 12 total socks in the dryer when the first time you pull it. And the first time you pull it, you're trying to find the probability of getting two black socks. So the first time you pull it, there is two black socks in that dryer. So two out of 12 times. So that's your first pull. So let's label that the first pull. And then the second pull, because we're multiplying these two because it's a compounded event. The second pull, you've already taken one out of the dryer. So that means that there's only 11 left this time. So assume that you actually pulled a black sock the first time. That means now there's only one black sock left in there because you took one away. So now you only have a 1 in 11th chance of pulling a black sock the second pull. So to find the probability of, of pulling a first black sock and then second black sock, you'd multiply straight across. So you get 2 times 1, which is 2, and 12 times 11, which is 132. You're going to divide these both by 2 on the top and the bottom. Hold on, let me change that to a 2. And that would equal 1 out of 66. So if we were to write down P event, the event would be 2 black and end the parentheses. 
and that would be a 1 in 66 chance of that occurring. And that it would be your final answer. Aquafina. All right, this question. Tell whether the events are independent or dependent. All right, so I've explained this to you in class. Oh, my goodness. There we go. Um, independent means, you can think about like when you're an adult or when you become an adult, you're independently taking care of yourself. And um, when you're a child, you're dependent on your parents to take care of you or whoever takes care of you. You're dependent on them to put a roof over your head, clothes on your back, food in your stomach, and so on. So um, you're dependent on them, and whatever they decide in your house affects you. However, when you live by yourself, you make your own rules, so their decisions don't affect you anymore. So independent, the like rolling this die and then rolling this die, those are independent from each other because they're two separate die. But dependent would be like the sock situation that we just did, where you took one sock out, so the second pull is dependent on your first pull. So dependent just means that you're dependent on the first event. So you roll a number cube twice, the first roll is a four. So how many fours are on the cube? One. Out of how many sides? Six. And then the second roll is you roll a six. So how many sixes are there? One out of how many sides? Six. So did rolling a six or rolling a, a four on the first one change your probability of rolling a six on the second one? No, it did not. Now, if these were tiles and you had one, two, three, four, five, six, and you removed one of the tiles, then yes, this would go from one to six, then down to one to five. So that would be dependent. But because these are not affected by any rolls that you do, they're independent from each other. So they're not affected by each other. Sometimes randomly it likes to pick black. So let's just go with it. All right. So it is independent for this answer. Next question. There are 98 lettered tiles in a board game. You randomly draw the tiles shown. How many of the 98 lettered tiles would you expect to be vowels? So they're using this as like a case study. They pulled only seven out of the 98 to see how many would be vowels. So out of the seven, there are three that are vowels. So we could write vowels and total on the bottom. So that in itself is three out of seven. So if we had our, we made a proportion you want to find out how many would be in 98. Well, if 3 out of 7 is in these 7 tiles, so 3 vowels out of 7, then the next one would be x, which you're looking for, over 98. And when you cross multiply, so 3 times 98 and 7 times x, 3 times 98 is... 294 and 7 times x is 7x. To get x by itself you divide by 7 on both sides and that ends up being 42. So there are 42 vowels in a group of 98 letter towels, towels, tiles. So there are 42 vowels in that 98 group of letter tiles. So it says how many um, of the letter tiles would you expect? So do we know that there's actually 42? No, but based on seven, we know three out of seven were, so we could say it's proportional to 42 over 98. So 42 vowels out of 98 letter tiles. Obviously, we're not sure if that's accurate, but based on the seven, then it would be. Um, an estimate, or a guesstimate for that matter. All right, for this question, you spin both spinners, find the probability of spinning a six and not spinning a black. So this first spinner we're going to spin, we're trying to get a six. 
So how many sixes are in this spinner? Well, there's only one. So it's one out of eight. And find the probability of not spinning a black on the second one. So how many are not black? Well, there's a purple and a red. That's two out of four. And then you're just going to multiply these two fractions together. So you have one times two, which is two, and eight times four, which is 32. Reduce that by two on the bottom and the top, and you end up with one sixteenth. And if we were to write that in P event, it would be P, and the event would be six, comma, not black, equals one sixteenth would be your answer. And that's how you would do that problem. All right, last question. Whoa, Nelly. Okay. For the following question, you randomly chose or choose one of the letter tiles. Without replacing the first tile, you choose a second tile. Find the probability of choosing the first tile, then the second. Okay, so would this be independent or dependent? The first time you um, pull the tile, and then you're not replacing it. So the second time around, you don't have as many tiles in the group as you did when you first started. So that would be dependent, because now you just took out one of the choices. So... Not a G. Well, how many are not a G? One, two, three, four, five, six. So six out of seven are not a G times how many are a Q? And now remember, not a G would be six, but remember we're taking one out. So say it was Z. So Z is now out of the picture. That leaves only six left over because you didn't replace it. And a Q. So there's only one Q in there. So then you multiply straight across and you get six time or six over forty two. And if you reduce this by six on the top and the bottom, you get one over seven. And if you were to draw that in P event, it would be P not G comma Q and a parentheses one seventh. And that would be your answer. One and seventh chance of pulling a not a G and then a Q. And I hope you enjoyed this probability video. And I hope it helped you clear up any questions that you had. Uh, I will see you tomorrow and hopefully you do well on the test. Ta-ta.